Did this one experiment prove Einstein wrong? That's what Georges Sagnac thought in 1913. Of course, he was wrong. No one has yet managed to topple Ali E. But what exactly did he do? The secret, as it usually is in relativity, lies in light. In particular, what happens to light as it runs in a loop when that loop itself is rotating? Imagine you shoot a beam of light in both directions around the loop when the loop is stationary. They will travel the exact same distance, and when they get back to the beginning of the loop, they recombine, adding together. On the other hand, if the whole apparatus is rotating, then when the light recombines, the light that went in the same direction as the rotation traveled further than the light that went in the opposite direction. And that means that if the speed of rotation is just right, the light waves can cancel each other out when they recombine. To be more precise, the phase of a wave is what part of the oscillation the wave is in. And to be specific, we measure the phase in degrees, with 360 degrees being one full cycle. If you take two light waves that have the same phase and combine them, they add together getting brighter. On the other hand, if you have two waves with a phase difference of 180 degrees, or pi radians, then combining them leads to the waves canceling out, leaving complete darkness. Anything in between leads to a predictable change in the brightness of the combined light waves. Now, a wave advances its phase as it travels, so the light wave that travels in the direction of rotation will advance its phase more than the counter-rotating light wave. So, working out the dynamics, the brightness of the recombined beam will depend sinusoidally on the speed of rotation. Great, but what does this have to do with debunking relativity? Well, Sagnac thought that this proved the existence of an ether, that light traveled at a fixed rate through the ether, and so the speed of light didn't depend on the motion of the loop, but only on the distance traveled through the stationary ether. And he's right, sort of. The experiment's results are almost perfectly consistent with a stationary ether, and Einstein's special relativity is supposed to be at odds with the ether. So that's it, Einstein destroyed, right? Not so fast. Einstein isn't that easy to debunk. It turns out that these experiments are also consistent with special relativity. Now this sounds counterintuitive, because you might think that in the reference frame of the rotating loop, light should always travel at the same speed that it always does. And this would imply that the two counter-propagating light waves should advance their phase exactly the same amount, meaning they should never cancel each other out. But that's not quite right. Light only travels at a fixed speed in inertial, meaning non-accelerating and non-rotating reference frames. Indeed, a relativistic calculation of the coordinate speed of light in the rotating reference frame is precisely what a stationary ether also predicts. The light traveling in the same direction as the rotation travels slower in the rotating reference frame than the standard speed of light, and the opposite is true for the counter-propagating wave. The result is a conspiracy that reproduces the same interference effect as the ether theory, at least to leading order. Einstein stays undefeated. By the way, there's also a linear Sagnac effect, which is closely related but is a bit less intuitive. Relativity, of course, can still explain the result, even if flat earthers don't seem to think so.